so the reason I decided to make this presentation is because my own bird knees mountain dog at home. Uh, this is Phoebe, she's three years old. We bought her as a puppy in 2016. Um, when we bought her, we kind of knew that the breed didn't have the longest life expectancy, but I decided to do more research as to why that is. Uh, so the breed originates from Switzerland. Uh, they're originally a uh, work dog. They're used to pulling carts uh, mountains in Switzerland. Uh, they're a wonderful family dog because they're very affectionate. And the average lifespan of a Bernese Mountain dog is six to eight years. It's one of the shortest lifespans of any breed of dog in the world. It's just a bit of research. Um, just did a study in Switzerland and it's done to determine the main cause of death in the breed. Um, the study investigated dogs born between 2001 and 2002. Uh, data from 389 dogs was collected and by the end of the study 10 years later 97% of the dogs had died. Uh, the median life expectancy of the dogs was 8.4 years. Uh, the females lived significantly longer. Their median was 8.4 years and the males was 7.7 .7 years. Uh, the most common form of death was cancer which affected nearly like 50% of the dogs. Um, so the causes of death. Um, the six most common health problems in the Bernese Mountain Dog are canine hip dysplasia, histiocytosis, gastric torsion, elbow dysplasia, progressive retinal atrophy, and von Willebrand's disease. So I'd like to talk about three of these diseases. Um, so CHD, um, large breeds um, often have CHD. Uh, causes the head, it's when the head, femur bone, and the hip socket meeting correctly, uh, this can cause arthritis in the joint. Uh, it's hereditary in various mountain dogs, and then histiocytosis, uh, it's a form of cancer. Uh, it's caused when histiocytes reproduce rapidly and invade a variety of tissues. It's a hereditary disease again. Uh, there's two forms, uh, malignant and systemic. Uh, the malignant form is extremely aggressive and it usually leads to death in a couple of weeks. And then systemic kind of comes and goes, but eventually leads to death as well. And then there's gastric torsion, um, this is just bloat, it's a severe condition, uh, it causes the dog's stomach to fill with gas, and the stomach can twist at the top and the bottom, preventing gas from exiting. Uh, if caught early, the dog can receive emergency care, uh, but the condition can lead to death in a few hours. So then the symptoms of these diseases, um, so CHD, uh, the symptoms are pain while exercising, lameness, stiff back legs, loss of muscle in the back legs, and a bunny hop like run. Uh, histiocytosis, the symptoms are lethargy, loss of appetite, uh, weight loss, anemia and skin abnormalities. And then gastric torsion, there is enlarged abdomen, vomiting, coughing, excessive drooling, pale gums and unable to pass feces. So treatment for these diseases. Um, CHD, uh, the vet will need to take x-rays of the dog's hip sockets. Uh, then they can decide on the course of treatment. Uh, treatments include weight reduction on the hips, exercise restriction, physical therapy, anti-inflammatory drugs and do surgery as well. And then histiocytosis, there's no real cure or treatment. Uh, chemotherapy is an option, it, but it just kind of prolongs periods of remissions and eventually is death. And uh, then gastric torsion, so if you suspect a dog has bloat, uh, they should take it to the vet immediately. Uh, the vet can sedate the dog, place a tube down their throat to release the gas that's built up in the stomach. If the stomach has begun to twist, the dog might require surgery. Uh, the vet may stay from the stomach in place to prevent uh, bloat from reoccurring again. And then uh, a bit on prevention. Um, so not all cases of hip dysplasia can be prevented, but you can take some steps to help prevent it. Um, keeping the dog's skeletal system healthy um, should start when the dog is young. Feeding puppies an appropriate diet will give them a head start and healthy bone and joint development and will prevent uh, excessive growth, which leads to disease. As the dog grows, provide them with uh, appropriate levels of exercise and a healthy diet will help to prevent obesity. And this is a major contributing factor to hip dysplasia. And then obesity can cause many other health problems as well. And for bloat then, keeping your dog's digestive tract healthy is important. Um, they should be fed raw food instead of, um, instead of processed food to reduce the risk of bloat. Um, chewing raw bones helps to strengthen the muscles in the dog's stomach. Um, some people say you can use elevated food bowls, but then others say that they don't really work and cause problems as well. And they should, dogs should be exercised regularly, um, but they shouldn't really be exercised right after they eat. Uh, the food should set in their stomach. So what to look for in your bite and burn is mountain dog. 
Uh, it's important to buy from a breeder that you know you can trust. Um, if, you, if it's possible, you should see both parents of the puppy and learn if they have any history of diseases. Um, you should be suspicious of the price as well. Um, for any mountain dogs, purebreds are quite expensive, so if you're paying less than around $1,000, that's probably something not right. And you can actually check the puppy's ancestry on a website and you'll be able to see health certifications, um, list of titles, copies of their pedigree and all the dog's relatives. That's my sources. Okay, let's give them a round of applause. Questions, comments from the group? There's a question for you. Yeah. What kinds of problems can elevated bulls cause? Um, they said, some people said that they could lead to bloat as well. It's kind of hard to figure out. Yeah, well, I think it's, uh, they might eat faster than if they're down low. And I know the guy that did a lot of research on below, uh, uh, Glickman, Larry Glickman, and he said, yeah, no, the elevator bulls are probably more likely to promote below than down. And I think it's a timing thing. You know, they when they're lower, I think it'll be slower. You could time it than up. But it's it's the, the uh, kibble expanding. Mm -hmm. And if they eat it too fast, boom. And we know some, expand a hundred percent so yeah and the Bernese mountain dogs when I go to dog shows there's one in Indy every uh, the spring I go back where they're grooming them and stuff I said I love your breed but I always hear the lifespan is eight years and I'll never forget the last time I did this about two years ago the guy yells over to somebody else Helen aren't we up to 8.5 now yeah yeah I know okay still you know what I mean and they were thinking that was a victory. It'd be so neat to find breeders and then to find out of the ones that they've sold and know about, the lifespan. And I'm wondering if some breeders don't have a better longevity than others, you know what I mean? But still, yeah, six to eight. Ugh, it's so, and they're so beautiful. I was gonna show you the, the Bernies that was here yesterday and just to, now you have one at home? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's my neat. three years old, did you say? Yeah. Yeah, that's me. So here's Biscoff, right by the door, doing a pizzle. They're right there. Yeah, they love chewing things. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Chew. She chews like rocks. And yeah. yeah. And he loves the pizzles. There he is. He's a great dog. I think he's only two. Yeah, I think he's two. But just six to eight. I have a neighbor that has Irish wolfhounds, loves them, and it's another six to eight. It's scary. It's heart-wrenching. Hmm? It's heart-wrenching. It is, isn't it? 